It begins thousands of years ago and stretches from farms and villages to the massive cities of today. It's a story about a boy that's been civilized out of his own essential nature and lost his joy. You can imagine Harry Potter under the stairs before he knew who he truly was. I'm talking about the masculine experience as we've all had and we've all been impacted by the limited box our fathers, brothers, uncles, men in our lives have been taught to stay in. We've all been conditioned to ignore and minimize our suffering, which leads us to projecting that onto others. Consider masculine scripts like man up, men don't cry, which leads us to be obstinately stoic or suspicious of feelings. Pursuing money and status at all costs. Thinking faster, harder in life and in sex. Ouch. I'm a counselor, and uh, my boy band career didn't work out <laughs> yet. Uh, and I have the honor of shepherding people on their own healing path back to their deepest self. My gifts of intuition compassionate listening, and spiritual connection allow me to guide people back to their bodies, to their desires, and to becoming whole. This is a story of how we can recall the lost pieces of ourselves for more joy and purpose. So the story begins. On his day of initiation, he is led by an elder into the wilderness with no food and water. He leaves the comfort of his home and his family and faces the immensity of nature, the whirring and buzzing sounds all around, the darkness setting in, the unknown, the pangs of hunger, the fear, the cold, all of it. Finally, after days, he is summoned by the elders into a shared experience of a symbolic wounding, like a piercing or tattoo. He is initiated into the group and to life as a man. This initiation, he comes back home to the village as an integral part of the whole, not just a cog in some machine. These traditional rites of passage have initiated us into a sense of wonder and a sense of belonging, an embodied sense with the whole human village and to our unique relationship with the intelligence of life. Call it the universe or God. We have relics of these rites today, like joining a sports team, a frat, or the military, but it certainly doesn't guarantee a more meaningful shift of identity. And we leave it up to pop culture or the internet? Yikes. So, I want to tell you about the work that I get to do with men in my office. The work I get to do is to melt the armor in our bodies and psyches that has us feeling split off from ourselves. The question to ask is, has our modern culture failed to give us an integrated person? One who balances assertiveness with receptivity? What about a different world? There's another possibility emerging. One of an evolved, deep, sensual man, comfortable in his skin, able to take risks, honor boundaries, support himself and others, living with reverence for nature and willingness to stand up in the face of injustice. So by bringing focus and care to places we may not have gotten growing up, we can release stuck energy as we move through layer after layer of unresolved emotion. As we do this, we lighten our load 
we access creativity, vitality, by recognizing that we may not have gotten our emotional needs met as children. We can internalize that as our own fault, or we can be kind to ourselves, like we would to our best friend. It takes courage to muster the courage to face loss and disappointment. But as we do, something magical happens. The ice melts, and all the energy expended in defending against our emotions, like sadness or even too much joy, gets released. We get to be us, all of us. I wish I learned how to process my emotions earlier on. As a teen, I felt when I was winning sports games or doing well in school, I was accepted, but I didn't feel like I could share where I was struggling. Fast forward to 22 years old, I found myself unemployed, insecure about my body and my future, and about to be a father. I didn't know what to do next. I felt frozen in place, like there was a knot in my stomach. I felt overwhelmed by the responsibilities of life. But I knew something had to change, and I made a commitment to myself to grow. I had to learn how to ask for help. I had to stop caring about looking like I had it all together and start sharing my ups and downs more openly. I didn't have the support of mentors or an initiation to support me, and I struggled with loneliness and not believing in myself as I made my way. But I started exploring my consciousness. I found yoga, and through that, an opportunity to live with really great men. This changed my life. We woke up early to practice meditation and breath work. We played music together. We challenged each other and shared our dreams. I got introduced to the healing properties of psychedelic medicine for healing trauma and connecting with nature. Engaging in this growth work in earnest led me to feel more connected to the people around me, more at home in the world, more embodied, more me. Guiding men into more authentic leadership and living is deeply fulfilling. I had a client that really made an impression on me. Let's call him Sam. He came to my office as the head of a medical organization, a really successful doctor. He had everything society taught him he should want. But he was unhappy with no zing. He reported having a flat sex life and not a lot of love flowing between him and his partner. But he was brave and he wanted to change. He came to my office ready, and we uncovered emotions like sadness and longing that he had been suppressing his whole life. As he unlocked the places he was hurt, he began a personal revolution. He started asking for what he really wanted. I watched him change before my eyes. He gave himself permission to drop obligatory but unnecessary board meetings and take days off, spend that time with friends or his hobbies. He got his spark back, and he went from slumping to confident because he trusted himself to value and express his deepest needs and desires. Not only did his sex life improve, but he felt more love and joy flowing in his relationship. And this is what I want for men and for everyone. It takes courage to be vulnerable and to express ourselves more fully. Honoring the gift of giving and receiving touch deserves so much care, patience, being non-judgmental towards ourselves and our partner. Piece of cake, right? One of the things Sam and I worked on in my office is getting more in touch with his body and his breath. A simple exercise we use is lengthening the exhale. 
This slows the heart rate down and engages the relaxation response. Breathing deeply into the belly, exhaling up to twice as long, relaxing the shoulders and the body. We can take a few of those right now. Breathing deeply into the belly, relaxing on the exhale, breathing into your belly, long exhale, breathing in, long exhale. With mindful practice, we can release tension in our bodies and get more and more present. We start to notice more what's happening all around us. The look on our partner's face, the way our tone of voice comes across, what's happening inside our bodies when we're in stress, the sound of an ice cream truck going by outside. I know that when I'm still in go mode after a long work day, put the phone down, Peter. I miss moments to connect meaningfully with my partner. As a relationship counselor, dating a relationship counselor, we aspire to check in regularly. If the conversation feels one-sided, can we make it more mutual? Sometimes just altering our tone of voice, the position of our body, and our closeness can move us from feeling threatened to connected. Can we take responsibility for and practice how to soothe our partner when they're in distress, instead of leaving them out on a limb? When my partner shares her thoughts and feelings, can I listen really to not just the words, but the emotions underneath, instead of just preparing a really great retort? It takes intention to build these skills. And as men, we're probably not taught how. We may even be dismissive that our partner's attempts at connecting. But this is a great challenge of our time, to recognize the trauma passed down generation after generation from neglecting and minimizing our emotions, our sexuality, and women's wisdom. If we can pay attention to the intelligence of our bodies, which includes honoring our desires and our limits in a felt way, is that not what's needed for the world today? My partner and I talk a lot about how we can bring this to life in relationships. Can we validate unconventional emotions for men, like sadness, hurt, confusion? Can we build empathy for each other's experiences and hold back that sarcastic comment? Let's embrace the complexity of our differences so we can build bridges across what divides us. Run that triathlon, start a business, protect your family, but you can also be receptive, relational, introspective. They're not mutually exclusive. Let's transcend this so-called civilized but disconnected man who's emotionally unavailable with maybe external success, but not happiness. If you're struggling, I encourage you to reach out to one or two people who are close to you. Let them in on your world and see what happens. We end our story now with the initiated man sitting in a circle with men he trusts, able to speak powerfully and with care, willing to be challenged and also vulnerable, making time for his mission, his loved ones, and his self-expression. Men like my friend Michael, who's building schools that honor children's mental, emotional, and spiritual nature, or Newber, who's building empathy for people passing on with dignity and support. Or Seth, 
who's creating creative solutions to cleaning up our oceans. These men inspire and challenge me to keep growing for myself and the world. The initiated man beckons you over. You are welcome here, he says. Will you join us? Thank you.